President of the United States is expected to give a statement shortly, perhaps in a matter of seconds, on the death this evening of Dr. Martin Luther King in Memphis, Tennessee. The announcement of the President's statement was made only several minutes ago. It will be issued from the White House. The President earlier had made plans to attend a congressional dinner in his honor. Whether or not that speech will be kept or the reaction of those people now assembled is not now known. Reporter Hal Cessna is with the Democratic leadership, and we hope to have some reaction, not only, of course, on the President's statement, but on the death of Martin Luther King. Dr. King had returned to Memphis yesterday to try to prove he could lead a massive march peacefully. He was at the head of the march last Thursday that erupted into violence that left one dead and 62 injured. The latest reports from Memphis are that two young men have been arrested. King was shot on the balcony of the Hotel Lorraine in Memphis. King's aide said he felt he had to lead another demonstration in Memphis and keep it nonviolent. The march with 6,000 persons, many of them labor leaders and union men, was planned for Monday. King had vowed to defy a federal court injunction banning the march if he could not get the judge to lift the injunction. Vice President of the United States, Hubert Humphrey, is now making a statement. This is an announcement that is something that should not wait, and we ask your attention to this special announcement, the Vice the President of the United States. special ceremonies at the uh, Democratic Congressional Dinner please, have been interrupted please. momentarily here at the Washington Hilton for a special announcement by the Vice President of the United you, States, please. Mr. Hubert Humphrey. Um, ladies and gentlemen, uh, this is a very, very unusual and special announcement. It's very difficult, but we thought in discussing this with Chairman, Mus Chairman Muskie and Chairman Kerwin and Chairman Koch that it should be made. I'm sure that some of you in this audience know that uh, great tragedy has uh, taken place in America tonight. One of the renowned and active leaders in the cause of civil rights has been stricken down by the assassin's bullet. Martin Luther King has been shot and he is dead. I can tell the audience that uh, in the community where it happened, there is no turbulence, there's no violence, there's just great sorrow. I think it can be said that he now stands with our other American martyrs in the cause of freedom and justice his death is, is a terrible tragedy and sorrow, first of all to his family, to our nation, and to our conscience. The criminal act that took his life brings shame to our country. An apostle of nonviolence has been the victim of violence cause for which he marched and worked, I'm sure will find a new strength. The blight of discrimination, poverty, and neglect must be erased from America, and indeed an America of full freedom and full and equal opportunity is the most fitting and appropriate living memorial, and it shall be his memorial. Ladies and gentlemen, I've uh, consulted with Senator Muskie, your chairman, and we think it would be appropriate if at this time we would call upon the chaplain of the House of Representatives to just say a word of prayer. Would the chaplain step? Would you rise, please? Eternal God, our Father, who art the refuge and strength of thy people in every age, and our refuge and our strength in this present hour, we pause in thy presence, stunned and bewildered 
at the shocking tragedy which occurred in our land this night. We offer our prayer to thee on his behalf, praying our Father that the cause for which he gave his life may continue. Lay thy hand in comfort upon his family. Give them to feel and to know that thou art with them and may they find their strength in thee. And again we bow as we, as we have this come to our minds so suddenly. We wonder at times how it could happen in this free land of ours and yet the apostle of nonviolence has been violently slain. Grant our Father that the cause for which he gave his life of civil rights may prosper, may continue until in this land of ours we may have liberty and justice for all. Comfort our hearts as we share with them in some little way the sorrow which has come to this family. Accept our gratitude for his presence in our midst and give us the strength and the courage and the faith to continue until freedom shall be the lot of all our people. In the name of him who died that men might live, we pray. Amen. prayer offered by the house chaplain comes the end of a rather somber interruption into what had begun as a festive congressional dinner uh, staged in honor of the president and of the vice president and of the majority leaders in both houses. Vice President Hubert Humphrey uh, paying tribute to the late Martin Luther King mentioning that he now has earned the place among the martyrs of American history. And following that, the prayer by the House Chaplain. There was a stunned silence in the packed dinner audience here at the Hilton as the announcement first began to be made. It was clear that many of those who were enjoying the dinner here had already some hint that there had been an injury although it was felt likely that not too many of them may have known that the injury had proven fatal for Dr. Martin Luther King, who was injured earlier this evening in Memphis, Tennessee. Some of those who attended the dinner this evening, some of those who were among the head table, the honored guests, uh, had commented briefly just before the dinner itself began. They had been informed that there had been an injury they had been informed that there had been an injury. However, it wasn't known at that time. Now we're going to switch Martin you back Luther to King. Uh, Washington. Do I ask every citizen to reject the blind violence that has struck Dr. King, who lived by nonviolence. I pray that his family can find comfort in the memory of all he tried to do for the land he loved so well. I have just uh, conveyed the uh, sympathy of Ms. Johnson, myself, to his widow, Mrs. King. I know that every American of goodwill joins me in mourning the death of this outstanding leader and in praying for peace and understanding throughout this land. We can achieve nothing by lawlessness and divisiveness among the American people. It's only by joining together and only by working together can we continue to move toward equality and fulfillment for all of our people. I hope that all Americans tonight will search their hearts as they ponder this most tragic incident. I have canceled my plans for the evening. I am postponing my trip to Hawaii 
until tomorrow. Thank you. You've just heard the President of the United States commenting on the death this evening of Dr. Martin Luther King in Memphis. The President said he will postpone his trip to Hawaii and his appearance at the Democratic Congressional Leaders Dinner being held in his honor this evening, from which earlier in this broadcast you heard the remarks of Vice President Hubert Humphrey. This is Ken Reed in Washington.